All right, welcome back to the Quick Carbon Podcast, everybody, episode 46 now. Anybody who can and wants to uh, help keep things going and uh, support the podcast and everything, help me survive IRL, uh, PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below. Massive thanks and gratitude to anybody who does, regardless of the amount. Now, looking over our midweek stuff, technically, actually, our end week stuff, but uh, looking down everything... Oil prices, as the title implies, are now holding steadily above $40 a barrel again. For the past few weeks, they had been up around $40, uh, but they had been sort of dipping back down, up to it again, back down again into the 30s. Now, over the course of this week, they have held steady over $40 per barrel, even almost touching 42 at one point, and as of this recording, they're at about 41 so I was actually expecting it uh, to drop a bit because uh, the market, in some heavy quotation marks, isn't actually all that smart. And I was expecting the uh, the news of the OPEC uh, reducing their production cuts in August to start uh, dragging the price back down. But it seems the market was actually intelligent enough this time uh, to realize that that reduction means nothing because it's still going to leave the supply deficit uh, between global production and global consumption at about 10 million barrels per day. Because despite early on assumptions, global oil demand is actually rising back up and has been rising back up much more quickly than everyone assumed it was going to. And uh, as of most recently, it was already back up to 92 million barrels per day. And during August, it's probably going to get back up to 94 or so, maybe 95, but probably we'll just stick with 94. So decreasing the production cuts by 2 million barrels per day is just going to even that out, and it's going to keep the supply deficit at around 10. Now, all the specific weekly numbers, U.S. oil production actually increased a bit uh, this week, up from 11 million barrels per day back up to 11.1. U.S. oil consumption dropped a bit from last week, coming in uh, under 17.7 million barrels per day, with individual product numbers within that being gasoline consumption, 8.55. So again, almost back up to normal range, but still holding out just short of it. Normally, U.S. Uh, gasoline consumption is between 9 and 10. U.S. diesel fuel consumption this week came in at 3.22 million barrels per day. U.S. jet fuel consumption holding over 1 million barrels per day for the second week in a row uh, for the first time in months at 1.08 million barrels per day. Normally, in present day, under normal circumstances, U.S. jet fuel consumption is between 1.6 and 2 million barrels per day. U.S. propane consumption for the week at a flat 1 million barrels per day. And U.S. crude oil inventories increased this week by just under 5 million barrels. And global jet fuel consumption, once again, uh, has been recovering from its bottom out of 1.7 million barrels per day back in April. Normally, in present day, in, during summer, you know, the height of global travel season, it would be up over 7. But it has been recovering. However, it has stalled out in its recovery. It's kind of flattened out over the last week, holding at about 4.9 million barrels per day. And a large part of that coming from the fact that uh, most international travel between the U.S., Canada, and most of Latin America and the outside world is still cut off. Over on the side of natural gas, U.S. natural gas production increased this week, jumping back up to 101.4 billion cubic feet per day, while U.S. natural gas consumption came in at 85.5. The individual numbers within that being heating demand only at 8.9, obviously, because it's the middle of summer. Consumption by natural gas-fired power plants up in the 40s at 41.3. U.S. exports on LNG tankers only at 3.7. Uh, before all of this began, they had been up at 9. And consumption by the pipelines for its own pumping system fuel coming in at 5.6. U.S. natural gas storage inventories up to 3.21 trillion cubic feet in storage. Uh, their increase has drastically slowed down as uh, U.S. demand has been picking up because of uh, the extreme summer heat. And as U.S. natural gas production 
has been on the decline since uh, this year started, even before all of this began. And that 3.21 is compared to normally at this time of year, U.S. natural gas storage inventories would still be down to 2.78 trillion cubic feet in storage. And last year, which had been a very high demand winter year, they were still down to 2.56. For the whole U.S. Uh, power demand thing in particular, over the past week, the U.S. on one particular day got even closer to its previous electricity demand record. The prior demand record being set back in summer of 2016, when at the absolute peak demand point of one particular day that summer, U.S. electricity demand reached 718 gigawatts of active demand. And recently, U.S. electricity demand had come pretty close to that. It had gotten up to 691 a couple weeks ago. And during this week, at one point, it got up to 694 gigawatts. Now, Canadian natural gas storage inventories, unfortunately, Canadian data, um, most of their stuff is staggered. So this is their data for the end of May, start of June. Over the course of May, Canadian natural gas storage inventories increased from 547 billion cubic feet in storage up to 640 billion cubic feet in storage by the end of May, start of June. And natural gas prices remain in the $1.70 cents range. Uh, currently just under $1.80. Now, in some awesome monthly mining data updates, the monthly copper data uh, for January through April, the first four months of the year, in 2019, last year, in the first four months of the year, 6.52 million tons of copper were mined worldwide. And in the first four months of this year, almost the same amount, but just under it, 6.51 million tons of copper were mined. So again, as we've been saying before, uh, 2020 is looking like it's going to be a flat year for copper production. Not a peak for global copper production yet. Uh, that is going to be coming soon-ish, uh, but that's uh, most likely a bit over another decade away. Global copper inventories uh, have resumed decreasing. Uh, they obviously swelled up a little bit over the course of everything that's been happening over the past several months as, uh, you know, demand for a lot of things was down. They got up to 1.56 million tons in storage, and uh, they've now dropped with this update down to 1.5. And copper prices, as of this recording, were at $2.87 per pound. Global lead production for the first five months of the year, January through May, Last year, in the first five months, 1.53 million tons of lead were mined worldwide. And this year, in the first five months, only 1.45 million tons were mined. So lead is looking like it's going to continue its uh, terminal decline. Global lead production peaked back in 2013. And global lead inventories uh, got a boost, likely getting some massive bulk carrier shipments as they took a jump from 63,000 up to 87,000 tons in storage. And lead prices are currently, as of this recording, at right around $1,810 per ton. Global zinc production, also for the first five months of the year, January through May. Uh, last year, 2019, in the first five months, 4.09 million tons of zinc were mined. And this year, in the first five months, only 3.86 million tons of zinc were mined. Global zinc production from zinc mines has started to get wobbly over the last few years. Not sure if this is uh, potentially peak zinc. Uh, I don't think it would be yet. There's enough zinc for, for a few more years of growth at least. But it has been getting a bit wobbly over the last few years. For a lot of uh, specific mining charts and... Uh, and uh, mining trends and data for like all the different metals and minerals. We did a, a specific lawn episode with the yearly MCS mining update data. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the corner. You can go listen to that if you want to. Global zinc inventories uh, also took a jump up from 122,000 tons in storage up to 133. And zinc prices are currently a bit over $2,200 per ton. And the monthly aluminum mining data, the first five months of the year, January through May in 2019, in the first five months, 
about 54.5 million tons of aluminum were mined. And the monthly updates are specifically for aluminum uh, extracted from the bauxite ore. Whereas the yearly data we show is the amount of bauxite ore. So there's some decently sized number disparities between the two. But the monthly data specifically specifies the amount of aluminum in the amount of bauxite mined. So whereas the amount of bauxite mined would be in the hundreds of millions of tons, specifically the amount of aluminum extracted from it uh, in the first five months was only about 54 and a half million. And this year in the first five months, it was a bit lower at just under 54 million tons. And aluminum inventories decreased down to 1.65 million tons in storage with aluminum prices right in the 1690s in terms of dollars per ton. And lastly, iron has been climbing recently. It got back into the uh, triple digits and even kept going from 104 up to now $112 per ton, with the, uh, the record highest it's ever been in the upper 100s. I believe it was in the 180s at one point. But uh, that's it for this one. So thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. And uh, thank you to Mysterious Russian Donator who donated between uh, last episode and this one. But like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't. Donate through PayPal or Patreon if you can, and if you want to, obviously. Amount doesn't matter. Anything is tremendously supportive. But no matter what happens to me anyways, may God bless you all, and I will see you all around next time.